Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this important hearing. I found it interesting that of the 12 witnesses the FBI and the IRS wanted to interview on December 8, 2020, including Hunter Biden, they only got one interview. That was Rob Walker, a friend of the Biden family and whose company, Robinson Walker, LLC, sent millions of dollars to the Bidens that originated in Romania and China. President Biden said his family didn't receive money from China, but that wasn't true. Mr. Shapley, according to your testimony before Ways and Means on page 18 on December 3rd, 2020, did you have a long meeting with the prosecution team at the U.S. Attorney's Office in Delaware? That's correct, on December 3rd, 2020. And is it true that U.S. Attorney Weiss was in and out of that meeting? Yes, that's true. And during the meeting, did you share your plan to interview Hunter Biden's, did you share your plan to interview Hunter Biden's associate, Rob Walker? All the interview outlines for the witnesses were discussed that day, yes. Okay. And you wanted to question Walker about the email that said, 10 held by H for the big guy, is that correct? That was included in the interview outline, yes. Okay. But U.S. Attorney Leslie Wolf told you she did not want you to ask questions about dad, meaning Joe Biden, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So Assistant U.S. Attorney General Wolf was, you felt, conceding that the big guy was Joe Biden. Do you think that's accurate? I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to conclude what she was thinking. Okay. You did have an interview with Rob Walker in Arkansas, correct? I did not, but agents did, yes. Okay. And did Rob Walker tell you that President Biden had ever showed up to a meeting with his son's business associates? He told us that he had shown up at the meetings, yes. Okay. Can you elaborate on that at all? Uh, I can only stick to what's in the transcript and, and uh, the, the witness described an a, a instance where C, CEFC executives were, uh, or uh, people involved in the CEFC were meeting at the Four Seasons and that uh, the subject's father, President Biden, showed up at that meeting. So President Biden was there physically? That's what the witness said, yes. Okay. Mr. Ziegler, maybe I'm going back here a little bit further, but earlier today, uh, you wanted to elaborate on one of your questions, and you were cut off by one of the Democratic congressmen. Is there anything that you want to say that you could remember that you weren't able to say? I, I appreciate that. So I wanted to say that one thing that was mentioned regarding the, the, the retired FBI supervisory special agent, I, I've actually recently reached out to um, some of my former colleagues that I worked this investigation with at the FBI, and I, I've asked them, was there anything I misstated in my transcript? They said no, from their best understanding of reading it. So I want to be clear on that, that they've read my transcript or they've referenced that they did and that they've said that, there's, that they didn't see any issues with what I said in my transcript. Okay, thank you. Mr. Shapley, anything else from you? Yeah, I, I want to uh, speak briefly about uh, our criminal tax attorneys at IRS criminal investigation. So first, they're only advisory. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I can't recall an instance where they uh, non-concurred with any of my actions uh, in, in within the group and that we didn't uh, uh, send it forward anyway through our, uh, you know, with our senior leadership approval. This, the, the issue here was the, the manner in which it became a, uh, a non-concur. Um, the line CT attorney who took uh, more than 50 days to review all the evidence uh, she concurred with all of the charges in that uh, prosecution report, this is Exhibit 2. When she sent it forward, a, a panel of five uh, of lawyers at uh, the National Office of, of Criminal Tax Attorneys, they concurred with the line attorney's assessment that it was a concur on all of the charges that were recommended. It then went to the senior leadership at CT Council, and the, and the top said that you need to change this to a non-concur. So that, that, even something like that could happen in practice. The issue here was that, uh, that we con I contacted uh, uh, the line attorney's uh, manager, the area council, and I said that um, you know, this was going to be, we didn't know this was going to be a non-concur. She's been saying it's going to be a concur. And she told us that it had always been a non-concur. 
basically you know, uh, obfuscating the entire events that occurred at the senior levels with the panel agreeing with the law um, and, that, uh, and recommending concurring those charges. So I don't know why CT Council would, would, would lie to us or, or provide false information about uh, uh, it being a, a non-concur the whole time. And uh, Special Agent Ziegler uh, had some communication with that line attorney and said, do you know that, that they are saying that it's always been a non-concur? And she confirmed, she, she said, what? No, I sent a yellow light, which is a concur. And uh, so that was the issue with CT Council that, that really perplexed me. Um, and uh, that's something that I wanted to add to the congressman back there. So thank you for the extra time.